it must be some kind of season for vlogging cameras or something because Panasonic has just released this, a vlogging camera, much in the same vein as the Sony ZV-1. This is the G100. It's plus 10 upwards from the G90, but it isn't in the same mold as the G90. This is much smaller and designed for vlogging. It's teeny, it's tiny, it's all minimalist with the buttons and you can get it in a grip kit with a tripod grip thing that has buttons made for your vlogging needs. And in all seriousness, Panasonic is quite a serious company. They've got the GH5, the S1H, serious cameras with serious features. They don't usually make cameras that appeal to the typical vloggers or what the industry thinks of typical vloggers. But anyway, what makes a good vlogging camera? Oh, look how beautiful my face looks in 4K. Good stabilization for when you're walking and talking like an absolute. You want a decent autofocus too for focusing on your moving face and also good sound. And a sponsor, NordVPN, a super fast VPN service with servers in over 61 countries. Also compact and lightweight would be desirable and this is very compact and very lightweight. Check that out. Well, that probably looks massive with me putting it right up close to an ultra wide angle like this. Is that better? There you go. And coming back to the audio, yes, it does have 3.5 millimeter input on the side there, hot shoe to put your mic on, but it's also got something called Ozo mic. Sounds like that Italian rice pasta thing, but no, it's got nothing to do with that. Those ordinary looking mic holes hide a load of holy moly, how does that work smart audio modes. So with the built-in mic, you've got several options here. You've got auto, I'll come back to that. You've got surround, which basically picks up sound from all around, front, which is, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory, really. Tracking, now this is the interesting thing. It will track sound. So if you move around the frame, it will detect where you're moving to and it will pick up the sound from there. Curious. And then back, which is from the back. So when you turn the camera around, it will pick up the audio from the back of the camera. Well, you know what? Enough of the talking and let's just show you what it sounds like. When you flip the screen, you can choose the built-in mic mode on the bottom left of the screen right here. Okay, let's start off with surround sound. There you go, that's surround sound. Okay, let's hit record then. So this is surround sound on the G100. Don't know what it sounds like. I guess it should be picking up some of the wind noise, probably a lot of wind noise. Hopefully not too much because this doesn't come with any kind of dead cats for you to stick on top of this. But surely you can just buy some kind of furry stuff or maybe give your cat a trim and stick that on top of the camera. Just joking, please don't do that. But yeah, that's the surround sound. Let's change it to something else. Well, I guess the front should be your typical vlogging mode. Let me put the camera right up next to the GH5 with the Rode, whatever it's called, just to get an idea of how they sound, how they compare the Rode mic versus this Ozo mic, which has nothing to do with Italian pasta rice. Although this mic isn't actually a shotgun, this Ozo audio, whatever they call it, is supposed to use some kind of clever algorithms to just pick up sound from certain directions. Anyway, that's the front. Let's change it to something else. Okay, that's on the back audio setting. Hopefully, if I keep turning this camera around and keep talking nonsense and keep turning, you should start to hear me more and more clearly. How's that sound now? Okay, so this is with the tracking. I'm not sure how this works. Presumably with face detection. I'm not quite picking up my face in a minute. I don't know if it's the hat or the sunglasses. It's probably the hat. It just doesn't like my hat. Okay, so let's test this out now. So if I go to the side here, I can see these little green waves on the side of my head. It should be tracking the audio. Okay, so if I go to the side here, let me see if it keeps tracking how I sound. And if I go to this side, it's following my face. Is it following the sound? I mean, usually with a shotgun mic, when you go slightly off axis, it doesn't sound as good. When you're talking in the middle like this, it should be quite clear. And hopefully when I'm on the side here, how's that sound? I'm squatting here, like I'm about to take a dump. Just filming myself taking a dump in the park. How'd you like that? Yeah? Let's see how smart the auto is. All right, I should take the half again. When you go from vlogging, talking to the lens like this, and then you flip it around, hopefully 
it should be keeping my voice clear and not still recording what's in front, which is a park bench. And park benches generally don't talk much. Not very talkative, are you? I think it took about three seconds for it to detect the switch and change from front to back mic. But still, the audio is quite clever stuff. Now usually when I'm vlogging with the JH5 I use something incredibly wide like 7, 8, 9, 10 millimeters. But look, even 12 millimeters is fine. I used to use a 12 millimeter f1.4 Summy Lux, but I don't have that anymore. This, the kit lens that comes with the G100, is 12 at its widest. Yeah, still usable, but when you shoot in 4K, Ding! This is what it looks like. There is a slight crop. That is definitely not 24 millimeters. Well, let me compare. I mean, the JH5 doesn't have a crop other than the sense crop. Let's switch that to... That's also at 12 millimeters. I mean, how does that compare? That is quite a significant difference. There is quite a bit of crop there. That's all face. Yeah? See, 12 millimeters. 24 millimeter equivalent, that's still doable. <sighs> that's just too tight. Well, you know what? We should swap lenses, right? With the 7 millimeter, it ends up being just wide enough for vlogging, but it's shaky with no OIS. The camera's IS is electronic only, hence the crop, although there's still a slight crop with it switched off. Actually, one thing I've noticed is it's got a wind noise canceller which cancels wind noise, in theory. Bloody wind. I had loads of wind earlier. Now I'm getting none of it. But while we're waiting for the wind to pick up, let me show you this. It's got, it doesn't have a tally light, but it's got the S1H red rectangle around the frame, just to show that you're recording. Now, okay, now while we wait for the wind rather impatiently, when you flip that screen around, it turns into video selfie mode and it gives you, they call it clear background. I see some kind of twitching going on in the background. It almost looks like it's focusing and going out of focus. Don't know what that is all about. My face seems to be staying in focus though. And I don't know if it's just because I'm using this nun kit lens. Let's swap the lens over again. Interestingly, it doesn't have the same focus twitching with the kit lens. Now, the GH5 obviously got 4K60. You don't have 4K60 with this. It's just 4K30 max. Well, the good thing is that 1080 is not cropped. So that's one thing. You got 1080 60p. And then that is 1080 25p. Actually, the 1080 looks really good. It's a sharp, clean image, and you can go up to 60 FPS. You can shoot up to 120 FPS in 1080 S and Q mode, but you do get some ware and artifacts that you don't get with a clean, regular 1080 mode. Vlog L is a surprise inclusion, but that 4K crop might be too bothersome for many, especially as the 5-axis hybrid stabilization works best with the kit lens, providing smooth walking shots. The autofocus for video doesn't use face detection, but has got face detection, which works, although sometimes it does take its time to get there, it does do it kind of accurately. The audio modes are cool and provide a decent level of sound for built-in mics and then you have some frame markers and vertical modes for Instagrammers and TikTokers. Unfortunately, you can't use it as a webcam with Lumix Live Capture, so this is really just for vlogging. If you shoot in 4K though, you're definitely going to need something a lot wider than that kit lens. Okay, I think that's enough for today and also the embargoes tomorrow, so I've got to get my arse in gear and get back and start editing this. There you go, here's your wind noise. NordVPN, I use it to watch region lock content, but it can be very useful to keep your web activity secure, especially in some countries where your freedom and rights may have been compromised. Hmm, I travel to one of those countries quite often, so yeah, that is definitely needed. With NordVPN, you can take control of the internet. There's no data logging, military grade encryption, 24 7 customer support, and automatic kill switch. You can try it out with a 30 day money back guarantee and also 70% off a three year plan when you go to nordvpn.com slash kiw or use the code kiw. That works out at just $3.49 per month. Not bad. Alright, thanks for watching. See you again.
Now, one thing I've just noticed, and you know booster board is no longer. This, this booster board was given to me by Tim Pan. This was beeping just now. I think one of the motors is gone. Oh poo.